D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So I just finished uh, Star Trek Picard episode four from season three. And you guys, this was a good episode. They said that this episode would be the one that set things off for the rest of the season. Um, I didn't get that, but we'll see. I mean, the last scene I was like completely confused on. But I mean, it's that doesn't mean that it ruined the episode. This episode was was this episode was thrilling. It was touching. It was engaging. I really liked it a lot. Um, there were a lot of, of scenes. It was very father-son orientated that I really connected with as a father who has a son. And I just really, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really, really good. I thought that the tension was great. Um, you know, I the acting was good. I thought that... Um, yeah, I, I have uh, I have good things, nothing but good things to say about this episode. I, well, there, some of the editing on this show is a little eh, iffy, um, but it's fine. It's like I'm not like one of those people that gets upset about it too much. But I mean, I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there that's like, you know, a director or an editor that's all like, eh, they didn't do good there. But myself personally, I was just like, you know, I can look past that because the rest of it's like really good. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think, you know, what really gets me is Terry Metalis is the guy that did this season. And I guess he's moved on and he's doing a different show now. But I really wish they would have kept him on to do maybe something else. Uh, because this, I just, I honestly feel like this is, and I wish that they would have started out with this, this Star Trek right here. Um, or at least started off here uh, with Picard and then still like had like, for instance, Strange New Worlds, which wasn't too bad, but it wasn't the best. But if they would have started here with Picard, this would have been like the best. And no Discovery, Discovery sucks. So yeah, let's get into this breakdown. I want you guys to know, I'm not gonna remember every single thing that was said, but I'm gonna try my hardest to remember. Um, but there was a lot of good things in this episode. Um, I mean, they brought back like some some member. Well, I would say member berries, but yeah, member berries, which is totally fine in my opinion. Like if you bring back member berries, but it 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 still plays into the episode, I'm all about it. Like I I I think that that's okay. So I know some people like they're like, oh, this is just member berries for member berries' sake, and I don't think they did that here. I think that they they did a good job putting it in and like having it connect to the episode. All right, so before I get started on this breakdown, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel, you guys. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm, and small channels like mine, we just keep getting shoved to the back of the line. Ooh, so I please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get started on this breakdown. So it starts off with a scene five years ago. I have to be honest with you, and it, it this played fine into this episode. I don't like the whole like five years ago it's like why don't you just start off with like your story and like at the beginning and just show everything five years ago but it plays in fine i know i'm being like ridiculous okay no more negative on this because this episode was good okay so <clears throat> starts off five years ago and it starts off in a bar and picard is just having lunch Salem brings this thing over. Uh, I also want to just say the alien sets the plate far away from him and he has to like lean over to get it. Uh, as a server, you know, no, you, you set it in front of them. Like that's how it works. Like unless they specifically ask, which I don't think he did. But anyways, he's having a glass of wine. Uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Am I right? And all these Starfleet people come in <clears throat> um, and they they start asking him questions and they bring up the um, Herogen and Janeway. They bring up Janeway. And he's he's going to he he starts telling them stories and stuff, and uh, that was nice. You know, the new generation is learning from the older generation of Starfleet. Very good, very good. And then it goes back to the Titan, uh, present day, and present day, and he's on there, and they're they're going into the gravity well of this nebula. And uh, because remember last episode, they lost like all power, not all power, but you know what I'm talking about. They can't use their engines, nothing. Apologies, I still need caffeine. Um, so then he's trying to figure it all out. They they won't be able to revert enough power 
to get them at to the engines to get them out of there. And every time they try, they drain more power. So they're trying to figure it out because because they, they you know they keep hitting asteroids and all this other stuff. So they cannot get out of this gravity well. Like they are just stuck, and it sucks. So they realize that they're just they're just done. This is the end, you know. And they did it their way, you know. Um, oh, and they keep getting these little blasts of energy, these little these little pulses of energy, which uh, plays into effect later. It's always good. Uh, apologies, I need to put some chapstick on. My lips are very chapped. Okay, so then, uh, so then they keep getting these little bursts and everything, and they can't keep their shields up when those bursts go because then they'll lose shields completely. So he drops shields. And Riker's trying his hardest right now, but he realizes that this is this is just the end. You know, they can't he can't fix they can't fix it. They can't do anything else. They've just they've just got to accept their fate. And that's that's kind of like uh, and that's um what the um uh what what is it called? Choo 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 choo. I can't remember. It's that's what it prepares you for. That in in certain circumstances, the no win scenario, which I think this is what it's called. This this uh, episode is called no win scenario. Is you just have to accept your fate. And that's what they they try to prepare you for in Starfleet. Like some some cases, you are not going to win. You will not survive. And those are the times that it sucks. But you need to accept your fate, and that's just how it is. And I think that that's um you know sucks, but you know how that's how that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Okay, so then moving on. So Riker goes in there and he said tells him he's all like he's all like I. I say this with all due respect and I'm, I'm, he's like, he's like, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, uh, yelled at you or something like that, but he's like, we are, we are, we are going to die. And he's like, as he's like within the, you just found your son and these are your last moments with him. He's like, you should spend time with him. And I was like, oh man, that sucks. John Luke, man. Cause I, I, I have a son and I tell you right now, I love that kid spending time with him. If you have children, spend as much time as you can with them because they, they grow up so fast and, you know, and like, like uh, uh, Jordan Peterson says that from zero to four slash five is like a peak experience. And he is right. They are just like the best. My son says the funniest things to me all the time. And he has he has insight that is just so pure, and I just love it. Okay, so I'm sorry, but his son is is all grown up. Anyways, so he goes and uh, this is where they're talking about. He's like, go spend time with him or whatnot because we're not going to survive, kind of thing. And so, no win scenario. I was, <laughs> I have a good memory, kind of. Okay, so then, all right, so seven of nine, she is. She's hunt. She's on the hunt, right, for the the founder, the changeling. And um, this part was thrilling too. I was like, oh my gosh, because I love Seven of Nine. I love Seven of Nine. Her, uh, she was my favorite from Voyager. First, it was Chakotay, but then she came on board, and I was like, oh, it's Seven of Nine. She's my favorite now. I think Seven of Nine isn't everybody's favorite Seven of Nine from, from Voyager. Anyways, if not, so that's fine. Don't get mad at me. All right, so she's she's on the hunt for this this changeling. She's like, I'm gonna find this motherfucker. She goes into the quarters of the engineer that he was pretending to be. And she finds the body of the engineer because he killed him. And she's like, I found the engineer. I found the engineer's body. He's been on here for weeks. Something bigger is going down. And she's so true because, because uh, we find out later they need Jack. And I don't know why they need Jack. And there's like a red door. I don't even have any theories, you guys. Like, I'm just like, I'm, I, I mean, yeah. I have no, I have no theories, but I, I would like to know because it's, it's so he's having visions. It's weird. We'll get into it when we get back there. So, anyways, so he's like, "Don't tell the crew," and she's like, "What?" And he's like, "Listen." He's like, "So if you tell the crew, uh, panic will ensue and everything." And he's like, "Right now, we're just like we're dying. So you know, it, it, it's going down for real. So you would just, just search for him yourself, kind of thing." And she's like, oh, and she was all like, and she said something bigger is going on because he came on board before all of this stuff went down. So then uh, she's 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 on the hunt. She's looking through everybody. She's trying to find him or whatnot. And Beverly is counting down. She's like five, four, three, two, one. And then there's a light burst. OK. And so, oops, it didn't show it. Okay, it didn't show it. It's fine. Um, so, she rea so she realizes later on something's going on, and we'll talk about that. So Jack's all like, 
he's all like, it's um they 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 figured out also that they are done for. So then John Luke comes in. He's like, Beverly, I know he's your son, but can I please have a moment, some moment, some time alone with Jack? And so she's like, absolutely, because I stole those years from you. Like, ugh. you know, um, and one of you commented in my last video because you thought I was being um harsh. I did not bring up the comment. And I just want to say, listen, I understand Beverly's point from her keeping Jean Luke or uh, Jack away from Jean Luc. I just don't agree with it. I'm sorry. That's that I, I I said what I said, and I stand by it. I do. I just I think that that's a monstrous thing to do. Not letting your the the father of someone um, hang out with their child. Um, I would be so depressed if uh, uh, I didn't get to spend time with my children, especially right now when they're young. So, um, Captain Shaw, he's he's uh, sharpening this blade, and he's like d he's like. Uh, do not enter, do not enter, do not. And he's like, ugh. So then seven of nine comes in and she's all like, um, there's a changeling on board. I need to find him. And he tells her how to to he's like, he's like, when you when you come in contact with the changeling, you ask them a question that they that that uh they wouldn't give you the answer, they would give you the answer that you wanted to hear, kind of thing. So for instance, he said he tells her he's like. He's like, I shouldn't have demoted you. You would have been a great captain or whatever. And she, he's like, she's like, are you saying that as to be a dick or genuine or whatever? And he's like, and that's how you know. Um, uh, because the the one person would say something like that. <clears> of <throat> oh, the changeling. So they're sitting here. They're trying to figure all this out. But while they're doing that, Riker tries to record a message to um, Troy. And... Um, and he can't do it. He can't record a message. And it's really, it's, you know, I want you guys to know, I've done my my Tony Stark video for my family. So if I die, they they have it and everything. And it's very good. Uh, uh, it's going to it's gonna get those tears of flow. And anyway, so he tries to do it. And he's like, in case of this ship is ever found, send this message to, to my loved ones. His wife and that stupid daughter of his, who's just so amazing. But he can't do it. So then um, they go to the holodeck, right? And it's the bar that he was in. He's like, this is a special place for me or whatnot. And he's like, let's have some. And he's like, he tries to give him a, a bottle, a glass of wine. He's like, I'm not really a wine person. And he's like, uh, which I go, uh, come hang out with me. You will become a wine person. I trust you. Want, being a wine person is an acquired taste. Um you know, I mean, my, my wife didn't drink wine until she had met me. And I know you're all like real uh, only pussies drink wine. It's like, mm, not really. It's actually delicious. And, uh, you know, uh, but I like other alcohols, especially vodka. OK, so they get whiskey and he's like the cheap of the beta. And I'm all like, what? I'm like, mm, you've never had you've never had expensive whiskey. Uh, and I've never had too expensive whiskey. I'm pretty sure it's delicious. Anyways, OK, so they, they pour him a drink or whatever. They have a drink and. They're sitting here talking and he tells them the story about how him and the the man he was named after, Jack Crusher, which was his best friend, how they had met two women. I can't remember what they were. And they they had they had stolen a shuttle to go back to the planet so they could um have sex with them. They wanted to get laid and everything. And I'm like, yeah, get it done. But on their way back, they were hit with a, a mini um, meteor shower, and it 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 paralyzed the ship. And they they had they had um, gotten rid of no, they got Jameson. They had gotten rid of comms because they didn't want to get found out, right? Because they had stolen the shuttle, borrowed borrowed the shuttle, and so they had to they had to um, one of them would navigate manually and the other one would would do impulse you know little bursts or whatever and it took 10 he's like it was 10 grueling hours but we finally made it and they talk about that so so then we hop over to she's she's trying to figure out who the 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 um changing is and this is sorry this is where he tells her the whole you want to you want to you want to find it. But he also tells her, you want to find is their their pot. And she's like, oh, you're not talking about cannabis. And he's like, I wish. And I was like, that's fine. I like this Shaw character. And if he doesn't die in this season, I hope they do something with the Titan. Like maybe do a spinoff of the Titan. I think that that would be a really fun show. 
Um, and I would like to see that. If they don't, I get it. It's fine. But uh, I would like to see that. But I mean, like Discovery's ending, Picard is ending. You know, they want to keep this IP going. I say do, you know, do a Titan show. And maybe that's what they're planning on doing. Who knows? So then he says, get the pot, the because they can't stay in, in f- solid form the whole time. They have to go into liquid form. Get the pot, and they will leave a little bit of, of residue. And he's like, uh, uh, residue goo. And you get that, and you can go to, and you can scan the biology of the ship, and you'll be able to find it. The changeling. So she, th- there we go. There's the pot. Oh, there's Odo. I didn't even notice that. Oh, Odo. I love Odo. I love Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine was where I started, you guys, with Star Trek. That is, that's my favorite Star Trek show. I love that show. I love the founders. I love everything about it. Okay. Um, okay, so then uh the Dominion War was so good. Okay, so she's she's uh, calculating the bursts. And then she goes and she goes to the thing and she ends up finding the pot, right? And the inside's the goo. She's like, she's like, uh, goo residue residue goo or whatever she says so we go back to the shriek um and i don't like that name the shriek so then captain um oh what is her name i can i only thing i can think of is amanda palmer because that's the actress who listen i think she does crazy villain very good but they aren't doing enough with this villain i just feel like It's just like, you know, a a kind of a a villain of the week kind of thing. And I wish they would do more with her, but it's fine. It's fine. Maybe we'll learn more. I'm so she goes to this little thing and she cuts off her hand, which I think she's a changeling because she's still got the, the goo stuff. So this goo stuff turns into this guy and she's all like. Jack Crusher and the, the Titan have, um, gone into the nebula and they're in the sinkhole kind of thing. Hold on, let me come back to this guy because he's, and she's all like, he's like, you need to get the asset. Hold on, let's just, hold. give me two seconds, this little guy. There we go. He's like the skull. I wish they would have shown who it looks like, but it's like, whatever. But he's like, you need to get Jack Crusher. He's like, you have to get the asset. And she's like, but we'll be destroyed. And he's like, everything is expendable, including you for the asset. So I'm all like, How great, which I would just want to say right now, I still don't like the character Jack Crusher in this. I don't like him. That's just the end of that. They've got to do more with him than just, you know, daddy, daddy, son, father and son time. For me to like him. I just don't like him. Don't get mad at me. That's just how it is. Okay. So he's like, you need to go get it. And she's all like, okay. It's basically like a suicide mission. So then her hand grows back and everything. And she's like, drop the, the, um, the the teleporter thing and and not the teleporter the portal thing and let's go get these guys so they do they detach that and then they go into the nebula to get them so we go back to five years ago and he finishes his story and he's like i would like to get back to my lunch guys and then they ask him another question and jean luc of course because he's got the gift of gab uh he's like all right i'll tell you another story and so he tells him another story and he t- oh and one thing that he says in here is I believe he says it twice. I don't remember when he says that you want you 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 end up relying on the people around you because they're the ones that are like your your support system kind of thing. So and they're your family. So go back to present day, and these these um all these people come in and they're like, is this a private place? And he's like, no, absolutely not. Come in. Oh, I forgot to mention. So they the hollow deck. The reason the hollow deck works right now is because it's got its own power source in times like this because in times like this where you know it's the end you can come and and have a familiar face to where you can just kind of accept your fate kind of thing because some people might need that which is totally understandable so then um i can't remember what they're talking about but shoot sorry guys i don't remember what they talk about here um but so the bursts come and, and and Beverly Crusher realizes that it's the the nebula is giving birth. So Danica, she's on her way to um to the biology, and she's like, "Listen, I need you. I'm going to need you to check something out, and let me, so we can scan for it." And she's like, "We don't have any power." And she's like, "Well, you need." To, she's like, "Use your tricorder." And she's like, "This is more than just a tricorder." Well, while she's doing it, they pass these two, and they overhear what they say. Well, this guy. He shoots the woman that he's with, and then um, he destroys the pot. And then he, she, she shoots off um, his arm. You can't see it. 
Um, and look at this face. This is this guy's got a good look right here. Um, they should hire him for more work in turn. Well, they can't because he's, you know, well, they could because he could be the thing, but he should be a villain. He looks very good villainy. Um, and she so she goes to shoot him and then, oh, gosh, I hate when I can't get that. Um, and so he then. Um, oh, my goodness, this is so annoying. So she shoots him, but he turns into his goo form. And then he goes into these this little area right here. And she's like, ah, crap, and everything. So then they, they're, yeah, she's figured out they're pre that it's pregnant and it's giving birth. I can't remember what they talk about here, you guys. I'm sorry. They're just, they're having a father-son moment and everything. And he does tell him, he's like, hey, listen. Because he he's like, he's like, do you ever wonder about me or something like that? And he's like, hey, listen, I had a good life. This is my life. This is who I am. You know, um, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm not quite sure if he says that or whatnot, but we find out later just some stuff. Um, but this was, oh gosh, I'm sorry, you guys. I wish I had remembered what they said here. I, I should have wrote it down. So, okay. So while they're having their heart to heart, Shaw comes in. He's all like, oh, sorry. Beverly Crusher. She's liberal with those, those pain meds. He's like, but I want to talk about Jean-Luc Picard. Because I was on a ship. I can't remember the name of it. It started with a C, though, like the, the Constance or something like that. And he's all like, and we were fighting the Borg. And he's all like, we had gotten down and it, all the life systems were done. We were life systems were gone. And we had gotten down. We we me and 50 of my friends um, had gotten to the life pods, uh, the shuttle. Uh, and there was only 10 seats and there was 50 of us. And we were just sitting there waiting for orders. And a commander came and he's like, he's like, uh, a commander came by and she, and he's like, he's like, he's like the locutus of the Borg. That's what they named him. He was so bad. He was so, so, so bad and good at his job that the Borg gave him his own name. That's how great the, the, uh, locutus was. Totally true. And that stuff is good in Star Trek. The Lacutus stuff, so good. All right, so anyway, so he's all like, so uh, the commander came down and she pointed out, she just started pointing out 10 people. And I was number 10. Me, um, some guy from Chicago, some, um, oh, what, what did they call him? I can't remember, but the people, he was an engineer because he worked in engineering. And I was number 10. And he's all like, all of those weren't my 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 bridge crew. We were all friends, and so he basically they did. He just had to like leave and abandon his friends. So she ordered us on that ship, and he's like, he's like, it's your fault. You suck. I, I don't like you very much. And I'm like, that's I'm like, you get where that's coming from. Um, what do you call him? A buckethead? Not a buckethead. I can't remember what he called him. Um, some a hole from from Arizona or from Chicago. Chicago, gross. So he ends up leaving because he's all like, he's like, sorry, ruined the moment, guys. And so, uh, she's figured out that it she the the nebula is giving birth because these are contractions. So then they go and they they, they, they these pulse waves. So they figure out what they're going to do is they're going to ride these waves out of the nebula. But what they have to do is they have to gather up enough uh, uh, speed to ride the waves. Because if they don't, the waves will just pass over them. So they're going to convert all the energy that they possibly can. And while they're doing that, they're going to open the um, the nacelles, the, the, the port nacelles, and they're going to gather up the energy from the wave while they get pushed by the wave. So it powers them up also. It's a very good plan. And so they're just going to have to use all the power that they possibly ha have. And I can't remember what he says here, but we're just going to move on because I don't remember. Sorry, guys. And uh, and they're going to do it because, like, this is all they got. So they get everything ready. And while they're doing that, they, they start powering everything down. Uh, and then they, 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 they prepare. But Oh, oh gosh. But they get... Um, Hold on, did I pass it? I passed it. No, I didn't. No, I didn't, because he's in his he's in his quarters. But did so 
the, he gives them a plan. He tells them what's going to be doing. He's like, basically like, this is our only plan. Either this works or we die. That's just how it is. So we're going to try. And I, and I don't know about you, but I'd rather try and die than just do nothing and die. So I think that that's, this is a good plan. So then while they're doing that, they go to his, uh, Shaw's quarters. And he's like, I know you don't like me and everything. And I get why. I get it. And that's why he has animosity towards her because she's a Borg too. Although she didn't have anything to do with that because I uh, she she I don't think she would have been born at that point in time. Or maybe she would have been born. She was just, maybe she was with the Borg. I don't know. And it doesn't matter. Anyways, no, she wasn't with the Borg. Anyways, okay. So then these two, maybe she was. I don't freaking know. Who cares? Um. So then they say, listen, the, 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 the engineering, the the gosh, the the port and cell things, all this stuff. They need him because this is this is the new people don't. This is old tech, and the new people, the new engineers, they don't know how to um, hotwire the nacelles. So they need him to do it because that's where he started. And he's like, so we just need a, a bucket head from Chicago. They call him something else, like a rust bucket or something like that from Chicago. So they realize they've got one wave left. So these two are in here doing their thing, and he figures out where they they messed it up, where they the sabot, uh, sabotaged it. Uh, if you get that joke, you're you're great. If you don't, it's cool. So they realize that they need to shut off life support to get the final like four percent of of energy to do it. So he's all like, so when they do that, they only have like ten minutes left, and they're like, you have two minutes until the next wave. To fix those those port in his cells. Oh, and he says he oh, and they they give him the captain's chair and he's like engage. And I was like, oh, it's, it was nice to see him say engage um, one last time, kind of thing. I'm pretty sure he'll do it one last time before the end of the season. But yeah. So then I don't know where Jordy's going to come in here, and we didn't get to see Worf this episode, which is fine. So they're moving along, and while they're moving along, they have to watch out for asteroids. So Jack gets on the horn. Oh, and these two are are still doing their thing in engineering. Uh, so Jack gets on the horn and, uh, he's, uh, there it is. Uh, and he's like, Hey, I need you. He's like, uh, seven, you go, uh, do something or other. I can't remember what he says. And then in comes LaForge from, uh, the, you know, the, the, the girl, I don't remember her first name. And she's all like, the captain sent me to, to help you out. And he's like, Oh, okay. Give me the hypospad. She's like, and then she goes, if we don't have both um, like ports open, we this won't work, right? And he's like, yeah. And she gets a smile on her face, which I can't get. And then all of a sudden, uh, Seven comes and she's all like, don't move. And she's like, it's me, LaForge. And she's like, she's like, uh, Commander. And she's like, Commander what? And she calls her Commander Hansen or whatever. And she shoots her because she's the thing. And she's like, uh, LaForge would have called me uh, Commander Seven out of respect. So they get everything all set to go. That gets open. The wave is a coming, but they they need to uh, navigate around these asteroids because they don't have shields. So they need to they need to navigate. So he uh, 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 Picard calls the stuff out while um, Jack navigates the asteroids. And it didn't need to be Jack, but it is Jack. You know, anybody. I feel like anybody could have done. But at this point, he's like, wait four seconds, and then they. They end up they end up getting around these these asteroids. Very cool, a very good touching moment between a father and son. And then the wave comes, and once it does, it blasts them out of there, and they're they're on their way, and they're they're gathering up energy and the the nacelles and everything, and it's very a hopeful moment and all that stuff. And then while they're doing this, they're just traveling along. Everything everything's going good, and to, and then the shriek shows up in front of them, and so uh, Riker he's like. Get the 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 um tractor beam, uh, grab one of those asteroids. And so they're pulling along, and as she's ready to fire, they hit, hold on, I want to play it. They hit the shriek, bam, like, bye bitch. And they hit the, the shriek, and um, you know, they mess it up really, really good to the point where they're they don't they don't have power. So um, and so uh they're losing impulse, they're losing all this stuff. Uh and uh, they don't know if they're going to get back online. They'll be back. Don't worry. They're going to they're gonna pull it out. And it gave birth to these little jellyfish alien things. Um, Beverly says this, like, uh, something about seeking new life or whatever. You know how Star Trek is. And uh, the, the goal is to seek out new life in the universe. 
And then, okay. And then he tells, and then while they're doing that, um, I, I, I think Picard remembers this memory now. And he, and he said, they, he's like, no, please let me finish my lunch. And then the, somebody calls out. He's like, uh, Admiral, he's like, didn't you, he's like, you have, you have all these great stories about your time in, in Starfleet, but didn't you have a life outside of Starfleet? Didn't you have a family to go home to? And this is where Picard says, young man, Starfleet was the only family I ever needed. And I was like, man, you know, that, that had to hurt. Uh, that had to hurt Jack real bad because he did seek out his father. He, he sought out the man that gave him life. Uh, and they all clap too. And look at that. Look at that face. Like that's hurt. And like, I think he, I think Picard remembers that. And he's all like, he's like, yeah, yeah. I was that dude that you just totally like you said you didn't need me. And I was like, man, that's, oh, that is like, oh man, it's so good. So good. Yeah, Terry Metalis. I I hope he I hope he gets more work, you know. And so he contacts uh Troy and he's talking to her. And uh she's like, I'm just glad Jill Ryan. He's like, he's like, I know we have our problems. He's like, but I love you and all this stuff. And I'm glad that he got to talk to her and everything. It was good too. I was more focused on uh the Picard Jack relationship so they're they're traveling they're just moving along and then jack has the he sees this black stuff in the back right and it's and then he's it's 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 got, we hear these whispers come find me come find me and sing so, so, and he sees he hold on i want to i want to play it if it if it's hold on i want to play it we get this red door we get this this oh, hold on so he's got this stuff see, see we see these red clouds we see this red door he's smashing his face and all this stuff. And I'm just like, what's behind? The, and it's, and then we get this. And then we it goes to black after this. Look at him with his hot muscliness. Not really though. Um, and then it goes to black and it's like, come find me. And it's a woman. It's a woman saying, come find me. And I'm all like, who is this uh, voice? You know, who's this voice? I have zero theories, you guys. I don't know who this could possibly be. I mean, the back, the fact that they brought back the founders makes me happy. But um, it was like, come find me. So I'm I'm just curious as to who who it is, what it is, what's going on there. But I have no theories. If you have a theory, please tell me. I would love to hear them. I love I love other people's theories because uh, I don't like being wrong and I don't like people throwing my wrongness in my face. But I really did enjoy this episode, you guys. Sorry, I talked for a lengthy amount of time, but it, this was a good episode. This was good writing. This is the way. The, the, that Star Trek should have been done from the get-go. I think that, you know, people that really understand and are fans of Star Trek understand what it is that that they need to do to make it fe make fans like us feel like it's Trek. And I think that Terry Metalis has a good notion of that. All right, I'm going to wrap this up now because I've talked way too long, but I just want you to know, just know that um, this was a good episode and I can't wait for the next one. Um yeah. All right. Tell me what you guys thought about this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your favorite part? Um, are you a father and you really connected with that father son moments? Um, are you not a father and you still connected with those father son moments? Because everybody's, you know, you everybody's got a dad, kind of. <laughs> I don't know. All right. But tell me what you guys thought. Uh, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you make channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week on my Star Trek Picard Breakdown Review. You guys have a good week. Live long and prosper. Bye.